The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus journeyed to a city called Naim, and his disciples and a large crowd accompanied him. As he drew near to the gate of the city, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was with her. When the Lord saw her, he was moved with pity for her and said to her, Do not weep. He stepped forward and touched the coffin. At this, the bearers halted, and he said, Young man, I tell you, arise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized them all, and they glorified God, exclaiming, Great prophet has arisen in your midst, and God has visited his people. This report about him spread through the whole of Judea and in all the surrounding region. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's see if the microphones are still working here. They are working. Well, first of all, it is good to be back. I hope that my English came back with me, and it is not still back in Colombia. We'll see. Today we have two readings that they are offering for all of us. Specific things in life to use and to profit. The first reading, it's making a comparison of the church to an entire body, and it is calling all of ourselves the body of Christ. And it is making a comparison that the functions of the body, they are not all the same, right? Do you eat with your ears? No, you have your mouth and it has a job to do, right? Do you walk with your hands? Some people, but do you walk with your hands? No, you use your legs, they have a function. So, are we going to say that, for example, the ears are less important than the mouth, for example? No, they all have a dignity and a service. And all together, they give you the opportunity to have the experience of a good life. It is providing for all of us the entire parts of the body. Taking that example from the body back to the church, the apostle Paul, he will present to us also functions and services in the church. So I would like to ask, who is more important, Pope Francis or George the Sacristan? <laughs> Hi, George. Who is more important? They are the same in the eyes of God. He is giving a great service, preparing all these wonders for us to celebrate the Eucharist. The Pope, he also has a little bit more of responsibilities, yes. But in the eyes of God, he is also serving what? Serving the church. It is the body. So we could say that George, it is a nail, right? And we could say that Pope Francis, it's a finger, right? If we are going to compare to a body. Now, in the services of the church, Paul also tells that there are things that they are more important than others. So it is not the person who is more or less. It is the service, what Paul is presenting here. So he is telling a level, and he says, first, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, and then all the miracles and all the mighty deeds. He's giving that order. And if you check in that line of work, each one of us in a moment of our lives, we are in those levels. There's some times for you to be a teacher. There's times for you to be a prophet and announce what is good, denounce what, the things that are not okay. There's also even times for you to be an apostle and guide your family back to God. In my case, I have to work that in the level of a priest, but am I serving myself? No, I'm a, I'm a priest for what? For you, for the church, or can you imagine the mass without you? I come out here and there's not even one fly. Huh? 
and I, the Lord be with me uh, and with my spirit. Uh, do I offer mass like that? No, I'm doing a service for all of you. Now, passing to the gospel, we will also see that there are things that are related only to the glory of God. Things that for us, it is not so common or normal to do. Can you wake up the dead already? Well, we have a gospel that it's still in that. The Lord, it is with a large crowd. And if you compare, there's also a widow with a large crowd, right? She's coming out of the town with the procession of death. The son is dead. Jesus, it's coming with a procession of, of life. He is life. And people are following because they feel alive with him. So you are seeing the encounter of two different types of people. What is the Lord then doing? He is moved with pity to answer. He is not waiting for you to suffer, suffer, torture. That's your consequence of your sin. No, he knows. And he moves with that specific compassion. And that is the element that I would like to mark for us today. Because compassion, we can have that experience. Maybe you're not going to go to the cemetery and wake the dead. Like it's happening there. But what is happening there, it is an element of faith. That Jesus is also providing for us. And it is, it is to have compassion. To have pity. To move ourselves to make a change in the life of others. What was the change that Jesus was producing there? In the times of Jesus, being a widow was a big problem. Okay, Because they were in that, those consequences where women, they are in the house. And they don't work. And that's your life. Stay there. So it's, if the husband dies, what happens to that woman? She needs to rely in the sons and the daughters maybe a little bit. So if the son dies, what is happening to that widow? Nothing. Her next neighborhood, it's going to be the streets. She's going to be begging to eat. That was the condition of that poor woman. What is the Lord moving? It's moving with pity. Son, little kid, come back. Go back to your mom. She's still in need. You see, now, that it's a level of work and miracles for the Lord. Maybe if he wants that experience for us, it will happen. But as, as Paul was telling in the first reading, it is not for us to mark the experience of God just by the elements that are after prophets teachers and apostles. So, oh, I believe in God and God is so good. If the su supernatural happens, we cannot measure our experience like that. The Lord even is telling in one of the Gospels, blessed are those who believe without. So what is the Lord providing here in us? Have a normal life, but make the supernatural. And what is the supernatural? To move yourself out of your comfort zone. And to go take care of the others that are in need of hearing the word of God. And also in the physical world that we are to provide, to make a good change. So the gospel today, it's a wonder, don't you think? So it's going to be a homework for you because I heard that you haven't been without, with homeworks for the last two weeks. That I was not here, right? So... I would like you to read again the Gospel of Luke, chapter 7. Chapter 7, find the miracle there. The miracle of Jesus waking up this kid. Can you do that today? Are you sure? Do I need to hear your confession tomorrow? That you were not doing your homework? <laughs> no, it's, it is not, a, not something that you have to. But it is part of your growing.